Hello and welcome to the video. This is Matthew and we're going to look at question 4 which is a 30 mark question on algebra. So we're shown the part of the function f of x which is equal to the absolute value of x minus 3. The absolute value basically means that whatever value we get it must be positive. So if we get a negative value we just get rid of the negative sign and it turns into the positive value. So part A of the question is worth 10 marks. So we're asked to draw the function g of x on the same graph and g of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus 3 minus 1. So we know that the absolute value of x minus 3, the graph of that, is equal to f of x, which is already drawn on the graph. So we have to minus 1 from that, so basically all of the y values will now just reduce by 1. So for example, we have the point 3, 0 here. So that's going to reduce by 1 to this point right here that I'm marking in yellow. And now I'm going to pick a point either side of that, so to the left side of that and to the right hand side of that. So I'm going to pick this point here for 1, and I'm going to reduce this by 1 in the y-axis as well which will lead me to the point 4, 0. And then equally so on the left-hand side of the point there, we have the coordinate 2, 1, and I'm going to reduce that to the point 2, 0. So now I'm going to connect that point to the bottom with the point on the left-hand side of it, and then we're going to get the graph of the function g of x, which will look like a v. And then your graph of g of x should look something like that. So now let's move on to part b of the question, which is also worth 10 marks. So this says that by drawing the function h of x, which is equal to the absolute value of 2x minus 3, we have to find the coordinates of the two points where f of x is equal to h of x. So in other words, they're points of intersection. So we have to draw the function h of x first. So to do that, I'm going to find a point on the bottom of h of x, which will be where it hits the x-axis. All graphs that are the absolute value of something, which h of x is, will have a v-shape, something like this. So I need to find this point here at the bottom, which will be on the x-axis. So at that point on the x-axis, the function itself will be equal to 0. So I have to put the absolute value of 2x minus 3 equal to 0, and then solve for x. So to get rid of the absolute value sign, I can just do 2x minus 3 is equal to plus minus 0. But plus 0, minus 0 are actually the same thing. So I can just put 2x minus 3 equal to 0. So then I'm going to add 3 to both sides. Remember, I'm solving for x. And then I get 2x is equal to 3. And now I'm going to divide both sides by 2, which gives me x is equal to 3 over 2. So basically, it hits the x-axis at 3 over 2. So the coordinate then would be 3 over 2, 0. So now I'm going to have to find a point on the left-hand side of that and a point on the right-hand side of that. So anywhere along this line here and then a point anywhere along this side here. And then once I can do that, I can draw in my two lines to get my graph of the function h of x. So to do that, I'm going to pick a point on the left-hand side of the function. So I'm going to need to pick a point that's uh, to the left-hand side of 3 over 2, 0. So in other words, a value of x that's smaller than 3 over 2. So I'm going to pick 1, and I'm going to put 1 into the function and find out what corresponding y value I get. So it's the absolute value of 2 by 1 minus 3. And 2 by 1 is 2, and 2 minus 3 is minus 1. So the absolute value of minus 1 is just 1. So therefore, our coordinate is going to be 1, 1. And now I have to pick a point that's to the right-hand side of 3 over 2, 0. So in other words, an x value that's greater than 3 over 2. So I'm going to pick 2. So now I need to find a point that's to the right of 3 over 2, 0. So to do that, I'm going to pick a value of x that's greater than 3 over 2. So I'm going to pick the point 2. So I'm going to find h of 2 and then find the corresponding y value, which will give me the coordinate. So 2 by 2 is 4, and then 4 by 3 is 1. So the absolute value of 1 is still just 1. So then the other coordinate is 2, 1. So now I have my coordinate that's going to be on the x-axis, and the coordinate to the left of that, and the coordinate to the right of that. So I'll be able to draw in my graph, which will be a v-shape. So 3 over 2, 0 is the same thing as 1.50, and 1.5 is here. And then our coordinate on the left of that was 1, 1, so right here. And our coordinate on the right-hand side of that was 2, 1. So now I'm going to connect the point 3 over 2, 0 with the point 1, 1, and with the point 2, 1, and then I'll get my graph h of x. So that pink graph there is the graph of the function h of x. So now we have to identify the points of intersection between that and f of x. And remember that f of x is the black graph. So the point of intersection is going to be this point here and this point down here. So therefore, the points of intersection are 0, 3, and 2, 1. So that's our answer for part B of the question, and now we're going to look at part C, and part C is also worth 10 marks. So here we have to solve the inequality of the absolute value of 2x minus 3 being greater than the absolute value of x minus 3. So the first thing to do here is to square both sides, get rid of the absolute value sign. It's difficult here to use a plus minus as both sides have the absolute value, so that's why we're going to square both sides instead. So 2x minus 3 squared is going to be 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. And that's going to be greater than x minus 3 squared, which is x squared minus 6x plus 9. So now I'm going to move the x squared minus 6x plus 9 over to the left-hand side. 
So that'll become 4x squared minus x squared minus 12x plus 6x plus 9 minus 9. And that will all be greater than 0. So we can add the like terms together. So 4x squared minus x squared will give me 3x squared. Minus 6x plus 6x is going to be minus 6x. And then plus 9 minus 9 will just be 0. So then we get 3x squared minus 6x is greater than 0. So now we can factorize this and we're going to use the highest common factor here. So the highest common factor of 3x squared minus 6x is going to be 3x. That's going to be 3x outside of x minus 2. And that's greater than 0. So now I'm going to put 3x equal to 0 and x minus 2 is equal to 0 to find our x values. So 3x equal to 0 will just give me x is equal to 0 and x minus 2 is equal to 0 will give me x is equal to 2. But that's not our question. We have to have an inequality in the answer. Sometimes we just have one inequality with an x in the middle or we have two separate inequalities with x's in both of them. To work that out, I like to draw a graph and our graph looks something like this as it's a positive quadratic. So the yellow bit is the graph there and the pink points there are the points of intersection. So 0, 0 and 2, 0. Now we're trying to find out the values of x where that function is greater than zero. So where that function is above the x-axis and that function is above the x-axis here and here. So it's going to be when x is smaller than zero or x is greater than two. As when x is smaller than zero, we'll have this area here. And when x is greater than two, we'll have this area over here. However, for any value that x is between zero and two, then we'll have it that the function is smaller than zero, which is not what we wanted. So that's our answer for part C of the question, the final part of the question and the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching and I hope I helped.